Hello, welcome everybody. This is Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman here with a fourth video in the Carlsbad structure part. This video, we're gonna see a game first between Zilagi and Suetin. Suetin was a well known master, Zilagi is not as well known of a player, and uh, possibly in this game, White wanted to make the draw. So, first things first, I wanted to show you guys how black can also play for a win and uh, basically get a good game in the Carlsbad structure. In this game, it was d4, knight of 6, knight of 3, d5, c4, e6, knight c3, c6. And uh, as you could see, Carlsbad can also rise from uh, this opening as well, cd. And now the best move is e takes d5. Try to create an unbalanced structure. If you're a higher rated player, if you want to be the lower rated player, very often you want to create an unbalanced pawn structure. Leads to interesting play. Bishop g5, bishop e7. And now queen c2 was played and now g6. So this was already relatively harmless for black because black's going to get a chance to play bishop f5 with a tempo and then castle and then get it, be able to basically equalize. But how to play for more? That's the question. e3, bishop f5, bishop d3, takes, takes, knight d7. So this seems like a dead equal position. How to really be able to outplay opponent from a position like that? Castles, castles. Rook b1. So first of all, black plays a5. Stopping b4. Usually a good idea. So the idea is, of course, if white plays a3, black plays a4, fixing, and now b4 will be very hard to get in. So that, that's why queen c2 is played, rook e8. And now white makes a mistake. He's trying to now simplify the game and trade off pieces. So white should play a3 here. And after maybe knight b6, knight e5 with an equal position. So, but instead he takes on f6, bishop takes f6. Now, knight takes f6 seems more natural, but actually this knight is going to have a very good future. And we'll see this main idea of that knight is. The knight wants to reposition himself to this knight square d6. And we'll see how it plays out. So white played a3. Black played now knight b6. Now it seems silly, but we'll see where it's getting at. Knight d2. Queen e7. b4. a, b. And now rook takes b4 was played. If a, b was played, rook a3 would be a strong move with idea of b5, c5. And now the knight is placed on b6 perfectly. Defending d5, keeping this pawn on b5. And black's gonna get a lot of counterplay over here on the d4 pawn and also on the c file potentially. And actually black's gonna get a very nice position. Before he took with the rook, but now after knight c8, a very strong idea. Rook b1, knight d6. And this knight on d6 is basically perfectly placed in the Carlsbach structure. It defends b7, it potentially defends against b5 breaks, and it's also looking a little bit at the center, like squares like c4, e4, and even a little bit at the king's side. It's basically perfectly placed, and it can't even be kicked out in any good way. And can't be traded. So it's just basically perfectly placed. And now black's basically better, because white really has no play because of this knight, whereas black has a semi-open a file, as well as play on the king's side, as we'll see. Basically, this knight really dominates the whole game. a4, rook a7, g3, h5. And now black starts playing on the king's side. Knight e2, bishop g5. And in general, in Carlsbad structures, very often black wants to play on the king's side. Why? Because white usually plays on the queen's side. Knight f1, h4, and now black's clearly dominating the game. Knight c1, trying to improve this knight. And now knight c4. Queen d1. If knight d2, potentially ideas like knight takes e3 are already in the cards. So queen d1, queen c7, knight d3, bishop back to e7, rook b3, takes, takes, bishop d6. Now the bishop repositions himself to put pressure on the king's side as well. Knight b2, knight a5, rook d3, king g7. And now, of course, the rook's coming to h8 to try to get an attack on the h-file. Rook c1, queen e7, knight d2, queen e6, queen f3, bishop b4, rook c2, rook e7, king g2, 
rook a8, knight b3, knight c4, rook d1, and the rest of the game is basically domination. Now black wins a pawn, and uh, little by little, step by step, okay, black's now trading this c5 pawn for the b7 pawn, now black's up a pawn, and now the rest is a matter of technique, now the c pawn will decide the game. And uh, eventually it does. Maybe black did not play perfectly, but in any event, you know, black wins without too much problems, transposing into this winning pawn end game. The next game I wanted to show you guys is the game between Lyash Porchish and Gary Kasparov. And of course, Porchish was a very famous strong grandmaster back in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. But Kasparov, of course, world champion. So we'll see how Casper of outplays, also super great, but slightly weaker GM. So Portish is in this game is potentially maybe trying to make a draw, simplify the game and keep the game more solid, possibly because he wants Casper to overpress. So let's see how Casper handles a position like this. Queen c2, knight a6, very interesting, trying to exploit the fact that the queen is on c2. a3. Probably that's not necessary because knight b4 wasn't necessarily a, so much of a threat anyway. The queen can always move and the knight's not well placed on b4. But anyway, Portish just wants to play really super solid. But as you'll see, that doesn't always work against best player. Knight c7, bishop g5, g6. So trying to go bishop f5, e3. Maybe e4 was interesting, making the game sharp. Bishop f5, bishop d3. Queen b3 was interesting, but again, Portis is just playing, trying to play this game as solidly as he can possibly play. Takes, takes, he trades the bishops. Bishop e7, castles, castles. And uh, now he played b4. Maybe bishop takes f6 was a little bit more accurate, actually. And then b4, queen e7 with equality. But b4 was played, and now black played a strong move. Knight e4. And uh, he went bishop f4, and now black played a very nice maneuver, takes, takes. And yeah, here he actually should have taken on c7, and after this, he's equal. But Portis did not sense the danger, he did not realize that this knight potential on b5 is going to be a very dangerous piece. And here black played a really strong move, so I'm going to give you guys a strong sequence of moves. So I'm going to give you guys some time to try to see if you can find it. What should black play? Black played a very strong idea, bishop d6, and after this, knight b5. That's the key move, because he wants this knight on this very strong square d6. And now we'll see how black wants a really thematic, nice game using this whole idea. a4, played a6, just stabilizing everything. So notice now, no b5, no anything. So white's out of play. White has no play on the queen's side, but black on the king's side, little by little, will develop play. And let's see how it's done. Knight e5. A little bit better was to play g3. With the idea to try to get the knight to g2. And try to keep the king's side protected. But white played actively. Knight e5. Rook e8. Rook e1. Queen g5. And now h3. I think maybe g3 was more accurate arguably. King g7. Queen c2. And now little by little. Step by step. Black's just uh, improving his pieces. And white has no counterplay. And eventually black's going to try to just advance the king's side pawns. And uh, little by little, white's just going to run out of play. So now queen b1, not the best move either. Queen h5, strong move. Queen b3, f6, knight d3. So white's just sort of waiting. But doesn't really work out because black's just uh, improving the position. Queen d1, of course, black wants to keep the queens on the board. Queen c2, rook e7, not allowing queen trade. Rook e d1, h5, queen b1, h4, queen c2, g4. And now knight f4 is already a decisive mistake. h takes g4 was should have been tried. Something like this. Although black still better. But knight f4. Queen takes c2, rook takes c2, g3. And now it turned out that the three pawn is going to be a really big target. And after this, white ended up playing uh, rook d3, king h6, king f1, king g5. And after knight e2, 
knight c4, c3, knight b2, black also wins this pawn, and then he returns to base, and of course from here on, now he breaks through on the queen side as well, and well, the rest of the game is a map, but black's just clearly dominating the whole game. And blacks have a pawn with a better game, and eventually he just converts that. And even though, okay, the rest is just a matter of technique. Now I'm going to show you another game, which is very instructive. This game is between um, Nikolic against Strong Grandmaster and Vladimir Kramp. Nikolic is white, and again, a slightly lower rated player, potentially wants to make a draw against a higher rated player, and seemingly solid structure. But again, it's not necessarily easy to do that. And again, a couple of nuances, you know, and you know, you can uh, basically get in trouble. Possibly bishop takes f6 was better played. But as we'll see, there are games where even without these bishop against the knight, white's also in a little bit of trouble. So knight e4 takes, takes e b4, and now b5. So here, this idea takes, takes knight d6 would fall a little short because white would be able to break with b5. So in a position like this, actually, black doesn't have this bishop. Yeah, in this case, white's going to be able to break through with b5. So that's why, in this case, black plays b5. And once again, black wants to get the knight to d6 all the way to c4. And after queen c2 takes, takes knight d6, mission accomplished. White's not really going to be able to get the knight to c5. And even if he does, he's always going to be able to trade it off. Whereas black's going to just control the c5 square completely. And again, the knight sits pretty on c5, but can't really create any threats. But the knight on c4 really just controls much more of the game and dominates the game much more. And again, because white doesn't have counterplay, can't break through the e4. Can't really break through on the queen side. Little by little, black's gonna just completely try to dominate the king's side. And finally, knight takes e3. Sure, it was a rapid game, so white did not play the best. But again, it's still strong grandmasters playing. And uh, here, black just breaks through. Black has all his pieces are just maximally active. And simply, white's position is going to be very, very hard to defend. And now he lost another pawn, now it's three pawns for the piece, and black still has massive initiative. And the knight still sits there, almost like not playing a role in this battle. And finally, white resigned, because after rook takes d1, queen f2, queen takes g2. So notice, once you're able to stop opponent's counterplay on the queen side, and in the center, you know, black has a very good chance of actually really doing a lot of damage on the king's side. Let's see a couple of other examples. And these good games are very nice games by well-known classic, you know, candidates. Played a match for the World Championship against Karpov. Uh, Arthur Yusupov, currently a well-known trainer. And here he's playing against a slightly weaker Grandmaster, Kalai Gabor. And once again, we get a structure where, for now, Black's just trying to equalize. Playing a solid, typical Queen's Gambit. Now he played this move Bishop d6. And white played bishop f5. Again, probably before was more to the point. But bishop f5. Black just simply played knight g6. Before a6. And now important move a6. a4 and now b5. Maybe if white did not play bishop f5. b5 could have been met earlier by a move like e4. But now e4 is going to be very hard to get in. Because the bishops are going to be traded. And e4 right away won't work either. So he takes, takes, and again, e4 is now under control, more or less. And after a, b, c, b. As you could see, even though the knight's not on d6, still, this idea is very interesting for black. Because at some point, the knight could still get to c4. And now, the b4 square is weak. The c5 square is hard to get to. And again, white's still having a hard time creating a lot of counterplay. So let's see what happened. Knight e2, so he's still trying to get the knight to c5, like this. Black trades this bishop. And now, after knight c1, black starts its play on the king's side. So even though, eventually, white does able to bring the knight to c5, black's just a little bit quicker. He has this nice bishop, which puts pressure on the king's side, and also looks at the queen's side, protects the c5 square, and black can start a very nice attack. 
queen e2, rook e6, queen f3, h4, rook e1, rook e8. So nothing seems to be happening right away, but again, step by step, black is improving all his pieces to build up all this kingside pressure. Now queen h2 is already becoming a more menacing threat. So I believe taking on c6 would not work. Why wouldn't it work? Because if you take on c6, I could take this. And now the c6 rook is hanging, and if I take bishop h2, winning the queen. So therefore, rook a1, rook e6, queen g2, queen f5, and of course black's keeping the queens on because of all this kingside pressure. Knight c5, takes, takes. And of course now the bishop did his job, now you can trade off, now that the king's side is weakened anyway. And now besides the fact that the king's side for white is compromised, black's pieces are more active and not to mention this pawn on b5 at some point will become a nuisance. So practically speaking black is much better. So white played g4 because otherwise maybe he was afraid black will play g4 and fix the king's side completely. But even here it's hard because there's a lot of pressure and now a very nice tactic because if king takes h3, then queen f3 followed by mate, and white resigned. And one more game by Yusupov, this time against a strong grandmaster, Yasser Serevan. In this case, even rated higher than Yusupov. But in this game, in the Olympiad, actually black was able to outplay white in this game. So, as you could see, even very strong players could sometimes misplay certain positions. So here, rook b1, knight g6 was played. And then here white decided to take. Again, probably before would be more accurate first, but here he decided to just take and play bishop f5. And again, this kind of play is not necessarily advisable for white for that same reason, bishop e7, b4, b5. And again, e4 is going to be hard to get in. That's the, basically the only way to really exploit the b5 advance to try to make c6 weak. But if the c6 backward pawn cannot be taken advantage of, this b5 is just a very nice idea for black takes takes knight e2 bishop d6 g3 and here you might think okay black's not gonna get much because he's not gonna get his beloved knight h4 and you might think now the knight on hg6 might be a little bit of a problem right but wrong because after a5 you know if he would play a3 black would still get a lot of play because queen e7 and then eventually rook a8 b4 pawn would be a problem and now the knight did not get a chance to get to d3 to defend the b4 pawn efficiently so white decided to take that, but after takes knight c1, it would seem that white's fine, but eventually the fact that the a2 pawn is weak tells itself. And now the knight's going to be able to bring himself to c4. No attack, no problem. We can also win on the queen side as well. And then once the queen side play is completely stopped, now slowly but surely black suddenly shifts his attention back on the king's side. King g2 h5 and now that all the white's pieces are on the queen side indeed and the queen side is shut down now the king's side pressure starts white tried a4 to try to eventually get the knight back to b2 but black's now a little bit quicker white decides to challenge the center desperately but now he played h3 to close again only chance at this point but now black just transposes into a much better end game a five very key nice idea and white had to sacrifice the exchange because he's losing a piece and after this you know the rest of the game is a mop up he decides to repeat moves to gain time on the clock but now he transposes into this winning end game and because the rook cuts off the king and black still has this g pawn black's completely winning and uh, soon you know black's able to convert this quite handily even though there's still some technical difficulties but again this lesson is not about that and then eventually this knight got himself trapped but again there is no way to save this position so these are just some basic ideas of how to really play for black key is the knight on d6 is usually very good attacker and defender basically shuts down opponent's play the knight is optimally placed on d6 so you want to try to get your play in before the knight gets to d6 the c4 square is really strong and also something to keep in mind over is the b5 idea for black especially if white can't really take advantage of the c6 square in a nice way and white can't break through with e4 and finally something to keep in mind is 
once the queen side play is more or less shut down, then black really can shift his attention to really put a lot of pressure on the king's side, and black has a lot of good chances to succeed on the king's side. So as you could see, black can really also do a lot of good things in the Carlsbad structures. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and the next video will also be showing some other interesting examples from the black side. Thanks everybody, and this is Grandmaster Alexander Lenderman signing off.